Today we're taking a look at the new Prestige Pro. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Okay, that intro was a bit facetious. These two rackets don't look exactly the same, but let's be honest, Head, you could have done a little bit more. 20 years ago, this would have been probably the biggest release of the season, but it's no secret that this line has lost a bit of its prestige over the last few years. It's by no fault of its own, really. The Prestige line represents a different time, and tennis has evolved. It's a pure control racket in the truest sense, and unlike some other control rackets out there, it has absolutely no modern tech. Now, before we go on, as usual, remember that any of the rackets we mentioned here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrenners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. So when you think of control rackets in 2023, you instantly think of something like the Blade, the Percept, the Pro Staff, and maybe even the gravity. All of these rackets have adapted to the modern game by introducing some sort of modern tech. The blade is pretty light, the Pro Staff has a 16x19 string pattern, and the Percept we've just finished talking about how spin friendly it is. The Prestige really has nothing. Now, it is a 98, so it's not impossible to use, but it has an 18x20 string pattern, it's pretty heavy at 320 grams, and it has a paper thin 20 millimeter box beam. So what's the point of the Prestige? Well, it actually has a very important role to play, and I'm super happy that Head hasn't scrapped it after all these years. It's one of the last true classic control rackets out there, and there's a lot of players still looking for that. But what if anything has changed coming from the last one because yeah they look pretty darn similar. Auxetic 2.0 Okay, to be honest, not much. The interesting thing is this is the first frame to come out with Auxetic 2.0 and we haven't received any marketing jargon, so I'm kind of going into this blind, which is kind of fun. My guess is that it's just going to be a better version of Auxetic and just to recap what Auxetic is supposed to do, it's a technology in the throat that makes it flexible and snappy, so it's supposed to add feel and also amplify stability and spin potential. Now we're going to get into it here and we'll start with control and feel because ultimately that's where the prestige has to shine, otherwise it's not going to be a very popular prestige. When you look at the most popular rackets on the market today, they're all very impressive at something flashy like spin, power, or user friendliness. The pure drive is very powerful, the extreme is very spin friendly, and then something like the speed kind of has it all. The thing with those rackets, and we'll take the extreme with its high spin as an example, but basically it's had to incorporate a lot of modern technology to become so spin friendly. So that technology is obviously crucial to the extreme's playability and identity, but the more technology you pump into a racket, the more you're going to slowly chip away at its raw feel and consistency, and those are two pillars of classic control. Now I use the term classic control purposefully because nowadays you can control your shot by adding spin, but a lot of players still prefer that classic control because it comes from an ultimate connection to the ball, and you can only get that with the most pure feel. If you're looking for classic control, the Prestige Pro is about as good as it gets right now, at least if you're comparing it to any other normal retail racket. The fact that it has so so little technology, even compared to other control rackets, means you feel every bit of the ball on impact. When you do make good contact, you get this great feedback, and when you don't make good contact, the racket definitely lets you know. On top of that, with that really thin beam and low flex rating of 56 strung, it's also incredibly soft, so dwell time is very long, which means the ball stays in the string bed that split second longer. Combine a long dwell time with excellent feel, and you get that unique sensation of almost being able to grab the ball and then caress it where you want on the court. That's that's a sensation that a lot of good players crave and one of the main reasons why the Prestige may grow old but it'll never become totally obsolete. A few more things help totally maximize its control. The 18 by 20 string pattern means it has a super consistent launch and then this Y-shaped throat and fairly small head size mean the sweet spot is small but also incredibly precise. Basically, the Prestige is all in for control. Now let's talk a little bit more about feel here because it is a small difference, but also probably the biggest change coming from the previous version. Do bear with me because conversations about feel can get a little boring and very technical, so I might lose some of you here, but this is a review about the Prestige after all, so if ever there's a time to be super nerdy, it's now. Let's take a trip down memory lane for a second. People really hated the first few Graphene Prestiges because they had this sort of hollow and also very tinny feel. That did get a lot better with time, and by the 360 plus, the feel was excellent excellent, and on the Auxetic it was almost perfect. On this one, there is still graphene in the layup, but I only found that out after my playtest, and I have to say I was a little surprised because I felt absolutely none of that hollow feel. Now it is super marginal, and I have to admit I only noticed the difference when I was hitting the old one and the new one side by side, but it just feels like this one's flex is a little bit smoother. The previous one is great, don't get me wrong, but there is still a tiny bit of harshness right at the end when the ball shoots out almost as if the flex is bottoming out. So that then begs the question, is this the best feeling racket ever? 
No. These are the two rackets I've got as my holy grail of feel, Pro Tour 280 and 2015 Blade. I'd still say they are a little bit better, but it does come pretty close. Honestly, it's always such a pleasure to hit with a racket that has impeccable feel like this. I'm glad that Head keeps improving it, because if there is one racket line out there that deserves good feel, it's the Prestige. I've talked a lot about modern stabilization technologies on this channel. Stiff racket face design in the Percept, Paradigm bending on the Pro Staff, 45 braid in the blade, and even Auxetic and heads rackets. These technologies are all designed to help stabilize a frame without actually increasing its static or swing weight. Everyone has their own version and they all do work, but there's something to be said about classic stability that you can only achieve by having a high static and swing weight, and the Prestige has that. Whether it's from the baseline, at the net, or on returns, the racket stays extremely stable through any change in pace. I never really found myself wanting to add weight to it, and that's always a sign of great stability. The one bit of unique tech you could say the racket has is cap grommets, and they've always helped to make the racket a little bit more stable. They basically add weight all around the edges here, which just makes it a little bit more sturdy around the sides. Auxetic 2.0 helps stability a little bit, but I'd say it's only about 5% or something like that. I've got this theory that Auxetic has less of an effect on the thinner beamed rackets and heads lineup. It kind of does make sense. Thinner beam means less material, so less of that Auxetic material to kind of work its magic. Let's just say whatever Auxetic does is more noticeable in something like the Speed or the Extreme, but the Prestige is just incredibly stable thanks to its high weight specs. The problem with that, and it's the reason why all these companies are dedicating so much R&D to stabilization technologies, but if your racket is heavy, it's not very easy to swing. The Prestige is just a tough racket to swing, and especially hard to bring quickly through contact to generate spin and power. The modern tennis stroke has become this compact whippy technique and unless you're super advanced you're just not going to be able to do that with something as heavy as the Prestige. Okay, I'm not going to harp on about how this racket isn't powerful, because if you're looking to buy a Prestige, you probably know that already, but yeah, no, this racket is not inherently powerful. In fact, look at some of these shots. If you get lazy and don't swing full, your ball is probably going to go into the net. Now, can you hit powerful shots with the Prestige? Absolutely. You look at a guy like Sarundalo, and he's not using this Prestige, but a racket a lot like it, and it's certainly not limiting him in terms of power. The racket is geared towards advanced players who can generate their own power, and it won't limit you in that regard, but yeah, you gotta generate it yourself, you can't get lazy here, and it's the same story with spin. The string pattern is super dense, and there's absolutely zero spin tech going on in here, so whatever spin you want, you're going to have to generate yourself, but with proper technique, you absolutely can. You give Nadal the Prestige, and you give me his arrow, and he's still going to hit with way more spin than me. Now I do just want to show you what I mean when I say there's absolutely nothing on the Prestige that's going to help you with power and spin. I've got a blade here and I think we can all agree the blade is an elite control racket. Still, I'm going to show you how many things there are going on in this racket that help give it more easy power and spin. We'll start simple, 16 by 19 string pattern. A more open string bed means more power and spin, but it doesn't stop there. 22 millimeter beam. Now you can see how much thicker it actually is and that also helps with power and making the racket more user friendly. Now let's move on to the throat. The blade comes in at a more V shape and then the Prestige is noticeably more Y shaped. That V shape keeps the racket more sturdy on impact which also helps with power and user friendliness. Finally we've got my personal favorite and it's kind of difficult to see on camera but the blade's grommets are significantly more open than the Prestige's which helps a lot with string movement and also makes the blade, again, more spin friendly. So all these things are there to help modernize the blade, but they do slowly chip away at the racket's control and consistency. And even though it is one of my favorite rackets for control, it is difficult to deny that control isn't better on the Prestige. Head could add all those modern elements, but they clearly don't want to because they want to tap into that clientele that's looking for the best control at any cost. Now you've probably noticed throughout this review I've said a lot of positive things about this racket and whenever I did have something negative to say I gave it the excuse of well it's a non-issue if you have proper technique and if it were better in that sense it wouldn't be as good for control. That right there is a problem though. If you're not an advanced player the shortcomings you'll have in terms of spin, power and especially ease of use mean that it's a racket that's really only going to work for a small percentage of players. And you might be thinking Luca you're excited enough about it where surely you can make it work but the reality is I can't. As much as I enjoy playing with this racket, there's absolutely no point in trying to shoehorn myself into it when I clearly don't have the level. So who should actually buy this racket? Well, it is never going to be a bestseller, but there are two specific types of people that will absolutely love it. One, the Francisco Sarundalos of the world, basically incredibly good players who want the most control and have the tech 
technique to swing this racket quick enough to get competitive amounts of power and spin. Two, the people who've been using this style of racket for the past 30 years. In no uncertain terms, the older generation. Those players who don't care about hitting crazy amounts of spin and care more about placing the ball with flat directional control. There's quite simply nothing else out there, not even the Gravity Pro, that's going to give you this level of control and consistency and the most classic feel that money can buy. That's why as much as I keep worrying that head is going to scrap it, I don't think they actually will because you really can't get this anywhere else. So long live the prestige, I guess. Now we obviously haven't talked about any of the other rackets in this line and that's because the Pro really is the classic prestige experience, but there are some pretty cool rackets in this line. I'm looking at the MPL in specific, so I can't wait to get my hands on those. For now though, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a slightly more techie one, but do remember if you want to demo the prestige you can come visit us in store or you can check it out online at racketsandrunners.ca.